Welcome AP Calculus AB students to video number two that's going to cover examples two and three from our topic 6.10, which is really all about the most advanced integration techniques that you will learn throughout Calculus AB. And the good news is that really what you're going to see in this video will pretty much put a period on the integration techniques. And this idea that we're going to talk about in this video is all about completing the square. Just like with long division, they're not prominently seen all throughout the AP Calculus exam. You might encounter a pair of them, one of each. It's probably a good idea that we still go into it feeling very strong and not try to min-max it and think, oh, there's only going to be one of those. Let's not be very good at this technique. Because if you do want to take more calculus down the road, that's going to be really helpful. Plus, being able to integrate these things will probably put you in a position where you could just integrate anything that you could encounter throughout Calc AB. So let's take a look at completing the square. So a little bit of refresher here for you. What was completing the square back in the olden days, right, when you were learning this for the first time, which is probably in an algebra course? Well, completing the square is always going to help when you have a quadratic function. So you have something of the form of an, like an ax squared plus bx plus c, perhaps, and you see that in your integral problem. Well, we know that this quadratic of the form, say, x squared plus bx plus c, it can be written as the difference of two, uh, of two squares by adding and subtracting b over 2 squared. That's that very elusive third piece of the puzzle that we always try to find so that we can add to both sides of the equation. So as you can see, that's what's happening here. Remember, you would take the middle term, the coefficient of the x, which is b, and then we would cut that b in half and then we would square that. Now we'll go through that procedure again very thoroughly when we do our two examples. And that b squared over 4, or the b over 2 quantity squared, as you can see, instead of adding it to both sides, in this case we can add it and subtract it from the same side. I know that seems kind of silly, but by doing that, that's going to allow this piece here to be factored very nicely into this piece right here. Now, I understand that that factoring is probably not real apparent here. Well, of course it's not because of the really complicated use of these general variables a and b. But trust me, once we see it with numbers, it'll all come back to you quickly. Let's take a look at example two. Integration that requires completing the square. So we're going to integrate what is essentially 1 over x squared minus 4x plus 7 with respect to x. Take note that no integration technique that we have spoken about thus far will help you with this particular problem. And the reason is that everything that you have is just crammed here in the denominator. There's nothing in the numerator besides a 1, and so u substitution is really not going to do anything useful. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our x squared minus 4x plus 7, and we are going to rewrite that using completing the square. So what is that going to look like? Well, one of the first things that I want to warn you about with completing the square is that you must make sure that there is a 1 coefficient in front of the x squared. I can't emphasize enough how important that is. Completing the square does not work if there's not a 1 there. And if there's not, you just have to do a little factoring out first. We may see that coming up here in a little bit. Next, once we're satisfied that we can complete the square, we just simply take our linear coefficient, which is negative 4. We'll cut that in half, and then we'll square that. A lot of times, students don't necessarily have to write those out, but putting them down can certainly be helpful. A lot of times here, at least at Avon High School, we call this the three amigo method, right? named for the very popular old 1980s uh, film starring Martin Short and Chevy Chase and, and Steve Martin. But the three amigos are going to be our friends. They're going to help us here. Our first amigo is our coefficient of x. Our second amigo is half of that. And our third amigo is the square. So what are we going to do with this third amigo? Well, as we talked about before, we're going to rewrite this original denominator. But when we get to that 
linear term, we're going to change course and we're going to add our third amigo, plus four. Business as usual when you add the seven. And then, wait a minute, we can't just go around adding four to stuff, right? That's illegal. So let's subtract four. And once we do that, we are able to use this idea of factoring as a binomial squared. You'll see that. Next step surely isn't to cancel the fours, right? That'd be silly, right? Because you get right back to where you started. So you don't want to do that. So here we go. What's going to happen next is the first three terms of your denominator. I'm going to highlight those. These guys right here do something absolutely remarkable. Because of the development of this third term four by going through this process of completing the square, we have completed a square. In other words, we have allowed this to factor into x minus 2 times x minus 2, which is a square. Little trick, don't tell anybody I said this, but if you were to write out your three values, your three amigos, the second amigo is always what goes after the x when you do your factoring. Yeah, little known fact. 7 minus 4 is going to be a plus 3. And now we have something that we can work with. We have something that we're going to be able to factor. Actually, this is a plus 3. Now we have something that we can integrate. If that was a minus 3, that was going to be a problem. 7 minus 4 is a plus 3. This, I would hope, we recognize as an arc tangent form. I know it's not your typical arc tangent form because there's a little bit more going on right here, but you can still proclaim that your u squared is x minus 2 squared and that your a squared is 3. Now what that means is that your u is just x minus 2 and your a is unfortunately not a very pretty value, but we'll go with it, the square root of 3. If you use division here, or your derivative here, you're going to be okay in that du is equal to dx. So basically, the only thing left for you to do is to write the answer to the problem. Remember that an arctangent form for an integration has the 1 over a in front. So we'll start with that. And then we can plop down our arctan. And then, of course, u divided by a in this case would be x minus 2 on top and the square root of 3 on bottom. And then don't forget your plus c after all that hard work. I do promise if you do have a CAS calculator like the TI Inspire CAS, if you entered this in, it would produce this answer, although I believe the calculator is going to have a bit of a propensity to want to rationalize the denominators. But outside of that, you should see the same form. And so you can always use your calculator from time to time to check answers if you'd like. All right, let's take a look at another example that uses this exact same idea. This time we have a little bit of a different um, title. It talks about this completing the square with a negative leading coefficient. Well, what's that all about? Well, what that's about is this content of the denominator under the square root. It's kind of a mess right now. A, it's not written in the order that we'd like, and B, it violates the fact that we don't have a positive 1 in front of the x squared. I know some of you might be thinking, well, wait a minute, isn't it missing a number? Isn't it missing the quote c value? That's OK. You can still complete the square as long as you have the x squared and the x to the first value. You have to have both of those. So what I'm going to suggest is that we just do a little house cleaning here. We take that denominator and rewrite it so that the negative comes first. And as we do that, I'm going to factor out the negative sign. We end up with positive x squared followed by negative 3x. And then I'm going to ask that you leave a little space before you close out that parenthesis. OK, well, this square root's going to stretch all the way across. And let's let the fraction bar kind of keep up with it. And then we'll plop down our dx. And now let's see what's happening here. Let's see if we can complete the square. So we go to our three amigos. Our first amigo would be negative 3. We're going to take that negative 3. We're going to cut him in half. And we're going to take that negative 3 halves, and we're going to square it. Yep, I know. Not the best situation. We had an odd 
linear term of x. It happens. We just have to deal with it. So we're going to plop this plus 9 fourths down right here. And then we have to do the opposite of that. Right? We can't just go around introducing some number to an expression unless we do the opposite of that number. Now, the opposite of that number is going to surprise you. Because if we put a plus 9 fourths here, we better put a plus 9 fourths here. And no, that is not a mistake. Why? Because really that 9 fourths is negative because of that negative factored out. It's very tricky, I know. Now the good news is, if you put a minus 9 fourths, you might notice here in a couple of seconds that this isn't going to be any inverse trig form that we've ever talked about. Okay, So be on the lookout whenever you factor out a negative sign that you're going to have that weird little anomaly. Now the next part of this might sound scary, but if you use a little bit of advice that I gave you a moment ago, in example one, this is going to help tremendously. What I'm going to do for this denominator is switch and write the 9 fourths first, followed by the minus sign. Now, if I take all of the stuff here I'm about to highlight in yellow, we learned that this is going to factor into a binomial times itself. Now, the first thought would be, wait a minute, I can't factor that. That has fractions. That's against my contract, right? I, I'm, not, I'm not going to factor things with fractions in it. Well, it may not be super easy, but don't forget, your second amigo is always going to be there to the rescue. If you use him or her and you throw this together as x minus 3 over 2 quantity squared, I promise you that the expansion of that binomial will be equivalent to x squared minus 3x plus 9 fourths. You guys might even see how the minus 3x can be achieved by uh, performing the inside-outside of FOIL, something I affectionately call OI. I'm going to extend my fraction bar or my uh, radical bar over, drop in my dx, and I hope at this point you are somewhat confident in the fact that this is an arc sine form. Right? A lot of inverse, or I'm sorry, a lot of complete the square problems in integration lead to an arc tan, arc sine type form. So you really want to connect those. So a squared is going to be 9 fourths. u squared is going to be x minus 3 halves quantity squared. And so that means that the a is 3 over 2. Nice perfect squares for both the top and the bottom. And the u is x minus 3 over 2. And again, because u is just some linear uh, uh, version of this x with, with no coefficient in front, that means that du is equal to dx. In other words, the derivative of u with respect to x is 1. So I can swing over a dx. That should be an x, sorry. And so we can just interchange our du and our dx. And at this point, that means there's nothing to offset with. The only thing left to do is write the answer to this problem and put this guy to bed. So remember arc sine of the three inverse trig forms that we've learned, it's the only one that does not have a 1 over a in front. So you don't want to put a 1 over 3 halves. You just jump right to your arc sine, and now you have your u divided by your a. And it could look something like that. Now I know that that is a horrible mess if you really get down to it. A lot of Im improper uh, in, in, uh, complex fractions going on here. So I do want you to know that you could clean this up. If this were a f multiple choice problem, maybe they'll elect to do this. But if you just simply multiply the numerator by a 2, and if you multiply the denominator of that expression by a 2, totally legal, right? We're just multiplying by 1. It does tend to clean this up a bit. 2 times x is 2x, of course. 2 times 3 halves is just 3. And then 2 times 3 halves again is 3. And boy, doesn't that look a heck of a lot better. If you had the patience and you took the derivative of that using chain rule, it's going to produce this expression every time. Also, you could use a CAS calculator to enter this 
uh, integral expression, and it's going to spit out, again, this answer here. Completing the square. No, it's not maybe the easiest integration technique that you've learned. Maybe it's going to be one of the hardest, but if you practice it, you'll get better. I promise I've seen that now going on for almost 30 years. The more you work at it, the better you're going to get. Thanks for coming. We'll see you at the next video.